So the Steam machines have been available for pre-order for a while now, and there's a lot of them, and you know what I'm thinking. Wasn't there a thing called the Phantom, which was the same thing, and it failed before it was even released and failed hard? If you don't remember what the Phantom is, it was a gaming machine designed to play PC games like a video game console, and everything would be downloaded digitally. It failed as it kept getting pushed back, and the CEO of Phantom Entertainment was accused of a pump and dump, raising the company's stock and then selling all of its shares. And let's not forget the backlash the Xbox One got when it was stated that it would always need to be connected to the internet before they went back and changed it. These Steam machines are going to be dead on arrival. PC gamers aren't gonna buy them because their rigs are already way more powerful than what these Steam machines offer, and console gamers aren't gonna buy them for a variety of reasons, mainly because they're too expensive for what they're worth. The price of these Steam machines are going more than a PlayStation 4. The cheapest one, and this is just the Alienware brand, you can get for $450. It has an Intel i3 dual-core processor at 2.9 GHz, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX card with 2 gigs of video RAM and 8 gigs of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. First off, saying that it's an NVIDIA GPU doesn't mean squat. They're not even telling you what kind of GPU it is. It can be an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660, which is a three-year-old graphics card, and by today's standards, if it's not obsolete, it's going to be pretty soon. But you can get the one for $750, and it comes with an Intel Core i7, which is a quad-core at 2 gigahertz and a 1 terabyte hard drive. But it's still not specific on which kind of graphics card it's packing. Who in their right mind is going to buy a system which is so vague on its specs? Because they're not going to know what it's going to be able to play. The Steam machine made by Asus is more specific. By saying that the graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce 9 series, but the starting price is at $700. And it comes with an Intel i5 processor, but it doesn't tell you which kind. Is it dual or quad core? The Falcon Northwest Tiki is the most honest with what exact parts are in it. And it comes at a very very hefty price tag of $2,000 to $5,000. The problem is, a lot of these steam machine manufacturers aren't being upfront and honest with what's inside. And because these things are going to be playing PC games, we're going to need to know what's inside to know what we're going to be able to play. If we look at the minimum requirements for The Witcher 3, you need an Intel i5 processor at 3.3 GHz and a quad-core one at that. There are dual-core i5 processors or an AMD Phenom X4940, which is 3 GHz and also a quad-core processor. You'll need an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 graphics card or an AMD Radeon HD 7870. And you'll also need 6 gigs of RAM. So far, that $450 Alienware Steam machine doesn't look like it's going to be able to run it. Now, if we look at the recommended specs, an Intel i7 quad-core at 3.4 GHz or an AMD FX8350 at 4 GHz, which is an 8 core processor. And you'll need an NVIDIA 770 GeForce GTX graphics card or an AMD Radeon R9 290 card. Looks like you'll be buying that $750 Steam machine if you want to play it, but who knows if it's even going to be able to play it. But the thing is, for $750, you can build or even buy a pretty decent gaming PC that will not only be able to play a wider variety of games, but can also be easily upgraded. And so far, the only Steam machine that's upgradable is the one by Cyber, and that starts at $500. And if these things are running Steam OS, which is Linux based, you're kind of screwed. Like The Witcher 3, for example. You need Windows. There is nothing else it will run on. So if you're looking through the store, you'll need to see if a game is compatible with Steam OS under the system requirements. The idea sounds good, making it sound like you'll be able to play all the best PC games and trying to sell it in a way that makes it sound like you're getting a genuine PC experience. But when you see how vague they're being with the specs and then look at the system requirements for these games, you're better off not buying it and just getting the console version or building your own rig. I have a feeling that these Steam machines are going to be a huge flop due to the fact that the cheap ones won't be up to par with what they're advertising they can do, and the expensive ones are already being out outpaced by enthusiasts who've already been upgrading their machines. The Steam Link was probably created because they knew that these Steam Machine consoles were going to be a flop due to their poor hardware and even poor pricing. Like the Falcon Tiki, you could probably build their $2,000 model for $1,200. They're building these steam machines to try and fill a hole that doesn't exist. 
Even the Steam Link is a bit redundant as graphic cards have an HDMI port built into them already, and more than likely, where someone has their gaming PC, they probably have their TV in the same room and may already have a means of connecting the two. For example, my PC is 5 feet away from the TV, and you won't need one if you foolishly buy a Steam machine, because that connects directly to the TV anyway. If you absolutely have to play PC games on your living room TV, then build your own machine and get the Steam Link. Yeah, building your own rig may cost more than $500, but at least you will not be buying an underpowered POS that's already obsolete before its release that you can't upgrade and will just be an expensive paperweight. It may set you back about a grand to build a good one, but you won't have buyer's remorse the next day.